what a day My heart is full of butterflies There's no disguise in how I feel Whenever I'm with you I've waited till the moment's right To look into those starry eyes And say the words that I'm thinking all the time Number seven was the best place to stay. He said turn left, didn't he? I don't remember. Okay, full start. I think that's the staff village. They're going to think we're morons. We're probably not wrong. There's a giraffe. Four dozen impala. That is our ablution hut. Were there any other people here? No other people here. He didn't think. I'm not sure how he didn't know whether there were other people here or not. What number is that? Number six, I think. See, the number will be on the tree. That's, That's number, number eight. Ten, yeah. That does look very nice. There's no shade there. Do you see any pine? No, but this must be it. This would be the place to stay, I feel. What do you think? Um, Let's just check six to ten. So we've just done it then. Did you not think the ten was quite nice? I quite like eight as well. That's nine. Nine is nice. We have chosen camp number nine. Nous arrivons! It is raining, which is going to require the very swift setup of the gazebo, which we're very grateful for. I think this is magnificent. Here we go. I don't have any shoes on. I've already got thorns in my feet. Lovely. Dry spot. I don't know where the water is, but we'll find it. Perfect. Right, gazebo. The only disappointing part of our campsite was that a number of primates had come through here and it was a 
it would appear that they had diarrhea. Some of them defecated here, vague hint of urine in the air, and so I've been walking around with this spade, covering it up and throwing what there was into the bushes. And Kirsten has now covered herself in a lemon citronella smelling oil to ward off the mosquitoes and flies, and as long as I stay near her, I can smell no further evidence of primate dump. The fire is lit, the sun is about to go down. We've been told we cannot wander about here after dark because, well, hippos, anything else might come out of the water. So now we're going to go and bathe. We have not seen the ablutions yet, and you're going to come with us. So far we have seen crocodiles in the water, no hippos yet. It does very much smell of animal. Smell that. Mm. Popcorn. It's a leopard. Or a genet. Uh. But maybe a leopard. No light, as yet, no light. This is for men. Very clean. Newly done. Oh, unsoiled. Fantastic. Ending off a magnificent day here on the Chobe River, the sun going down, a robin singing above us, a white-browed robin chat, and a little cuckoo off across the river. drying his wings so that he can fly. Interestingly, this bird has some of the only feathers in the bird class that can soak. They are not particularly waterproof. That is to aid the bird in its diving, swimming under the water. The other thing you can see very nicely in this picture is the ailerons on the bird's wing, which often you cannot see. Those are those two sort of spiky things at the elbow, spiky feathers at the elbow, and that allows for fine adjustments when the bird is in flight. Like its thumbs? Uh, yes, could be. Uh, would it be like its thumbs? I, I, I don't know. Probably would be, actually. For modern darters, the aileron is used for texting or playing games on a smartphone. Very poor at thumb wars. Unless it was fighting with other darters, then it might be quite good. Also, where the hell did these flies come from? They flew in. Just went out my nose. Well, if it goes up your nose, you must sit still because the bird is going to fly and it's going to be a jerky picture. It look, always looks like it's going to fly, but then it doesn't. I think those are just the standard arrow marked kind. 
The dart has got a bit of fish stuck on its beak. You need to stop doing that. Yes? There are flies tickling me everywhere. Okay, that's it. This bird is going to not fly. Here, Basil, the baboon, dominant male of his troop, is feeding upon some flowers. He is also making slightly intimidating movements in order to indicate that he is not afraid of his human relatives sitting in the car. Basil looks cross this morning. Perhaps he didn't sleep well. Or perhaps a young challenger is threatening his position in the troop. Maybe he has simply got ants and flies crawling up his nose, much like we have here in the car. There's Percy, who is Basil's son or daughter. Percy is very naughty and doesn't listen to his mummy. And so Percy will not be getting any cake for tea today. Percy will have to make do with spinach or the wild version found hereabouts. There's Percy's mummy. whose name is Brunhilde. Little Percy. And here comes Percy. Percy's playing with his mummy now. Percy is a boy, in case you're wondering. Mm -hmm. You can see his small schlong. Myrtle. Myrtle the Mantis, who has hitched a ride from somewhere in the Joby, but we're not sure from whence she comes. But this is her, going to be her new home. The forest's where we are now. Yes. What do you think of that, Myrtle? Ooh, yes. Oh, 